What's going on, guys? It is October 11th, 2023. It's Wednesday. And we have a Carrier Infinity that's uh, throwing error codes. I think we got an 82. The customer said it came up on the stat. Um, and then a 54, I think. So um, let's go check it out. See what's going on. All right, we're going to get in here. to the service information. All right, so we've had an 82, which is suction over temp lockout. Also today we've had a suction temperature sensor fault. Um, the warm up delay, temperature fault again today. All this has happened today. Suction temp lockout. Okay. And then yesterday. Same thing. Okay. And it is in heating mode. We're going to try to run it and see what happens. We're going to put it in test mode or checkout mode, heating. We're going to, so we got three stages here. Let's turn this up a little bit. Start. So walking over to the outdoor unit now. Looks like there might be something up with that suction temperature sensor. So we'll take a look here and see what's going on. All right, it's still equalizing pressure. I was here one time and water was leaking right out of that corner of the gutter there leaking right on the unit here and it was in the middle of winter and all that water would freeze and um forget what happened but it caused the caused the problem Let's see if this thing comes on all right in the carrier service tech app this is what they're giving us for an 82 system malfunction suction over temp lockout okay so According to the customer, I thought he said it was happening in air conditioning and heat. But we'll go through everything here anyway. So we either an undercharge system, uninsulated vapor line, um, indoor TXV operation. Um, so it looks like troubleshoot the TXV and also troubleshoot system charge now we also had a 52 which is what it's locked out in now suction temp sensor fault sensor harness not um suction thermistor not properly attached or broken or damaged sensor hardware too damaged okay so we are going to troubleshoot this sensor first All right, so I'm pretty certain this is our suction sensor here. And that should just be a 10K sensor. I do believe that's zip tied on there. All right, we'll go over on this side and see if we can figure out which sensor it is, where it plugs in at. <coughs> All right, so it plugged into here, OST, which is this one right here. Let me get our meter out and check this. See if it's good. All right, so we have a number of 10K sensors here, and we have one 50K sensor. So the ODT, which is the discharge temperature, that is a 50K but everything else is 10K. So our suction temperature, which is here is a 10K, and both these here, which is our outdoor temperature and our coil temperature, those are both 10K. 
So in theory, with this unit off, they should all be ambient temperature right now. So if we look at our chart here, it's about 70 degrees out here. Our 10K chart at 70 degrees, we should be about, I don't know, 12, between 12 and 14, I guess. Yeah, I'd say 15, maybe, maybe 15 at the most. Actually, it looks like 60 degrees would be 15, so yeah, I'd say about 14, about 13, 14, 12, somewhere in there. Um, according to that chart. Now, that's not a actual, you know, definitive chart. It's just a curve, so, but it gets you pretty close. So let's check these sensors now. All right, so this sensor here is our suction temperature. These two are our other 10K sensors, which is our um, coil temperature, and then also our um, outside air temperature. So we're gonna try to test these right now and see what we come up with. So the one in question here is this one. And it looks like we got 1.2. So 1,292 ohms, okay? Well, that is, that is way off of our chart. All right, it's actually 19 ohms on the coil temperature, which would, or 19K ohms, which would be about, mm, 60 something degrees. So we're good there. Because we're probably around 60. 60s or so degrees. All right, let's check our other one. Just as, just for comparison. All right, and that one's coming up very similar. We got about 18,000, which according to our chart, 18,000 would be about 60 something degrees. All right, so you can tell we're pretty close on both these 10k sensors but this one is like way off so that sensor is probably bad all right i got this honeywell 10k sensor um on my truck we're gonna try to use this to get the customer by to see if we can get this thing started with this sensor we're gonna go ahead and install it now probably have to use the same plug so we'll have to splice that in um, yeah, let's see if it works. All right, we got the 10K sensor mounted to the suction line there. And like I said, this is by no means a permanent fix. We're just trying to see if this works so we can get the customer by so we can get a new sensor. Because the carrier supply house for this is a, it's a good distance away from here. And if we can get them by and come back with the right sensor, that would be ideal. So we got our leads pulled through here. Um, I cut the end of the old one off. Uh, we'll strip, shoot, we'll strip the wires back, um, get it connected and go from there. All right, we got everything put back. Here's our splice here. Um, Cause ideally you don't want any splices in any sensors or resistors. Um, because where, is there, where there's a splice, there'll be a, a resistance drop. So this is, like I said, um, I just want to reiterate, this is going to be temporary if it works. If it doesn't work, then it looks like we're getting them a sensor, but uh, sooner than later. But and you can see this style is for the pipe. It wraps around the pipe. It has a, this good a long space here that senses temperature. And ours is more set up for air, but we got it pressed right up against the the pipe there, so we should get a good solid reading. All right, let's get the fan put back on. We'll turn it back on. All right, running in cooling mode.
guess that's cool when that feels like heat maybe i put it on heat it's just blowing cool air i guess been going for a few minutes now but it's in a 10 minute stage two warm-up delay so it'll take a few minutes to get out of that before it really gets wound up but it is working i'm just uh the only thing i'm afraid of is making sure that that temporary sensor makes a good reading right now it's reading like 68 degrees or something like that so I want to make sure that it actually reads the real true suction temperature once this thing gets running at 100%. All right, we're really wound up now, so let's go back inside. We'll check what the thermostat's saying. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that's a true reading. Hmm. It's close, but I don't think it's true. We've been running for about 18 minutes now. I put this on an hour. So we're gonna have to get that sensor as soon as possible. I think it'll get them by. It's just not reading exactly what it is. All right, so we're gonna look at the warranty details here. Um, all right, so we still are covered under warranty until 2027. We'll go back back all right let's view the parts here I'm looking for this sensor here okay so that's our part number there sometimes they supersede them this is the older number, so they are listing the newest number here. HH79NZ101. All right, so we will call, um, we'll call the carrier distributor and see what the price and availability, or really just the availability, um, is on that part. All right. And she's wound up right nicely in heat also. So I think I'm gonna button this up until we can come back with the right sensor. Hey guys, sometimes we gotta do what we gotta do to get our customers by. And um, a 10K sensor is a 10K sensor. Some of them look different. Some of them are for different things. But at the end of the day, they all work the same. If it's a 10K sensor, it's a 10K sensor. If it's a 20K, it's a 20K. I mean, it's just um, it's just at what scale it, it, it reads at. So, um, I usually keep a 10K sensor on here. That one was an outdoor temperature sensor, but it works. So after I let it run in heating for a while, I check back on the thermostat to see what temperature that was running at. And it actually was in the fifties when it was running in heat mode. So, um, you know, it, it, it is working and it'll get them by and we'll get them a new sensor to put in there. So, um, a lot of this stuff in the air conditioning field, uses a 10k sensor so it's not a bad idea to keep a couple different 10k sensors on your truck to get yourself out of a jam you know that's not the first time i've done that um i've used you know uh generic 10k sensors on um on york package units i have a, one of the very first videos i did was how to troubleshoot a 10k sensor um so you know it's good it's good to have one because they work no matter wherever you have a 10k sensor any 10k sensor will work as long as you can splice it in there and, and make it work so <laughs> that's what we did but we're going to get them the right one um our local carrier distributor which is actually called shore distributors here on the eastern shore of maryland um they have it in stock so <clears throat> we'll pick it up and we'll get back out there in the next couple days or so <clears throat> but all right guys well that's going to be it for this one so um, if this was helpful for you or if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this, guys. So, all right, just a quick one, guys. I just wanted to show you that and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.